Love it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday Drum Show. My name is Vinny. Peace, Apache, Apache. After you watch this show, you'll be playing like this. I'm telling you. And you'll learn how to do this. I like doing that. I mentioned that before. Anyway, you'd have to watch this quite a number of times to play fast, unless you're really good. But anyway, hey, Mike, JC, Jace, Jace, AC, uh, Phil, <laughs> Lala, everybody watching, my sister Terry, Charlie, thank you guys for tuning in. So uh, we're back again with no um, technical problems. Finally figured out this thing with Facebook where I somehow enabled something and right before the show, <laughs> I didn't see anybody popping up. And I'm like, oh, crap, really? Last week. So it didn't look like anybody's watching. So I had to stop the thing in the middle of the intro, you know. And uh, just wanted to make sure you guys were there. So I had to stop. Look at this stick, right? It's getting e eaten up. There's something about sticks that are used like this. They're like coming home and like comfortable, except that one's getting a little bit bad, you know. I like sticks that are used. You pick up a new stick, it's like an unknown, especially when you're playing live. You know, I've got a new stick. Like I'll pick up this one. This one's all right, you know. I'll put that one there. A little heavier. So whenever you pick up a new stick, and this is actually a used stick, very interesting because it's like a, an unknown person in the room until you get used to what the stick is, you know. That's the way us drummers think. And uh, so I just, uh, this week was cool. On the weekend, I went to uh, Total Access Studios, which is a studio that uh, we used uh, with Dio a lot. We recorded... Um, Angry Machines there, and uh, the engineer and owner, Wynn Davis, I got to work with Wynn, haven't seen him in years, it was great, we were doing the project together, and uh, I did that, because usually I do all the sessions in this room, you know, with my setup. <laughs> There, I had to go into a real studio. So the first thing I do, because there's another set of drums there, I brought my cymbals, I brought my snare, uh, foot pedal, and seat, the most important thing. But the first thing I did was take the whole damn blanket out of the bass drum. I look, and it's a bass drum blanket. Blankets belong on the bed, not in the bass drum. So... Uh, so I rip, trying to rip that sucker out of the hole. You know, there's a skin with a hole in the front. Like, I don't know if you can see this one. But they're not very big, not that big. And I'm trying to pull this thing out. And I get in there, but then the, the head rips. You know, and everybody's watching me from the studio, and they think I'm crazy. I am, but I don't like that stuff in the bass drum. Because it's too dead. It's too dead. I don't like that. This is live. Sawtooth. <laughs> yeah, it's nice and big sounding. I don't want the uh, little dead sound. So, oh, I forgot to turn my phone off. I wonder who that could be. It's probably Carmine asking for tech support for his computer I built him. We won't answer it. So, uh, so anyway, so I 
pull this thing out and the head rips and you know shit and they're all looking at me like what's he doing so i've just put some tape on the on the head over the cracks and the rips and it worked fine and the bass drum sounded really good it was a 20 22 inch but it was one of these long bass drums which i don't particularly care for the long bass drums because of the sound it takes a little bit for the sound to get out you know because it's so long this this is uh 24 by 14 and that was a 22 by a mile it seemed like you know but anyway we got a good bunch of tracks down and it was fun working with win and the best part was they had this place around the corner from that studio is called mike's cheese steak sandwiches man those are good ronnie and i used to get uh stuff there you know when we were in the studio let's go get a cheese steak and get that and uh oh they were so good I ate the whole thing. This is a big giant sandwich, and I tried to play afterward. I went for a walk because I was so full. I was like, "Come on, let's play the fast song." Could hardly play. I burned it off after a couple of takes, so that was good. Uh, and that studio was the last studio Ronnie was ever in, unfortunately. And uh, we were doing the some fixing on the Heaven and Hell. DVD video, which was not the first one. Um, what were we doing anyway? It was another one we were doing. And Ronnie had to fix a couple of little things on there. And uh, so we talked about that. So that was really something, you know. But he was always there. And Wynn was telling me, I didn't realize it, but every time he came in the studio, we got there and he'd have crossword puzzles and he'd finish have to finish three crossword puzzles before we started but i i didn't sit there and wait i was probably getting the drum sound or, or we were doing something else and ronnie would like to finish his crossword puzzle didn't take him long it took him like 10 minutes it would have taken me two, 10 days and a dictionary no a cheat sheet Now that song was slipping away. You know who played that. And uh, if you hear uh, when Ronnie was singing, slipping away, slipping away, I caught a couple of them, you know, like. That's the kind of stuff Ronnie and I did. We played together. I heard what he did and he repeated it. And the next time I'm going to do that with him, you know. So, those are cool uh, little tricks. If you're recording, you know, listen to everybody. Those are the things you can find within a song that you maybe can catch on and play to uh, that makes it really cool, you know. So, and uh, what else is going on? Um, we got, I got another amazing royalty check for 59 cents from that same company, which sent me one for one penny the other week. So luckily those are not the ones I rely on. I'll tune this guy up a little bit. And then uh, I put in the thing, I, I posted the link to the Jay, oh not Jay Leno show, Jimmy Fallon show last night. before the show sorry stuff's got to come out so anyway uh because they they sent me an email about the rock camp movie you know i do a lot of rock camps with david fishoff rock camps are really fun they're really cool a lot of i don't know if a lot of you guys watching have come to one of those but if you did you know and uh they sent me a link saying hey the, uh roger daltrey is going to be on uh, jimmy fallon i'm like cool and they're going to show this clip and I was in the clip. I went, you got to be kidding me, really? And I watched the clip, and it was probably, uh, 
a minute and a half long. And I thought to myself, that's probably a bit long for major t television, you know. And I didn't watch it last night because I fall asleep like at 1030 watching Netflix. I'm like, I got to be doing something to stay awake. And watching TV is not doing very much, but to sit there and watch Netflix. Um, so I watched it this morning, and of course it's not in there. Jeez, you know, God forbid they put some real stuff on these TV shows. Everything is edited and time and this and that, and it's cut up, you know. So you could find it. Uh, I don't know where you can find the clip. It's probably online somewhere. It's a trailer for the movie. The movie's really cool, and Roger really likes it, and he said some amazing things that uh, about it, about, uh, you know, how he had such a great co career. And going back to this rock camp, all of a sudden you're in a room with all these different musicians, some, some advanced, some in the middle, some in the beginning, and, uh, and it brings them back to when they started. They were kids, too. I felt the same way because uh, I must say, I grew up in Brooklyn. We had a lot of uh, musicians in Brooklyn, and it used to be jam night on the weekends. Like somebody's parents went away, like or, or were out for the night, and go, "Hey, Tony's uh, parents are gone. We're gonna jam at his house." And a whole bunch of guys would show up and girls and stuff, and we jam. You know, we just played Hendrix songs and uh, I don't know who else was. Cream, sunshine, you love all, all sorts of stuff, and it was fun jamming, you know. Then, you know, you do one of those, you're playing on the drums, and you want to let the other guy play, so you keep the two four going like this. Come on, come on, come on, you play. You keep the beat going, then get matched, get off, while the other guy gets on, all that stuff. But we don't get to do that. But at the rock camp, we actually get to jam. There's jam rooms. Uh, all the campers arrive. They call them campers, and then. Uh, like we're in different rooms. Sometimes me and Rudy Sauzer are in a room playing, me and Tony Franklin. And, uh, you know, guys come in, hey, you play guitar? Come on, we need a guitar player. You sing, sing, what do you know? And, and we'll just put it together. So I haven't done that in years. Because when you start getting professional uh, with all these bands, you, you do the same kind of routine. Uh, you make an album and, uh, you know, you do all that thing in the studio. Then you rehearse, then you go out on the road and play. So there's really no, not too much play time, you know? Although at Last in Line, we do jam during the sound check and play sometimes silly stuff and, and sometimes we just jam. Sometimes we just record the jam and some of it wound up on the record. So uh, it's a real cool thing. So he was talked about that, so I thought that was really cool. So today, uh, Sawtooth, these are Sawtooth drums, Chromacast, uh, hardware, same company, and uh, we're promoting, they're promoting the cases that we, Joe Fuco, the owner of the company, and I sat down and we came up with some ideas for cases, for drums, you know, they're soft cases, and here's one, one that happens to be right here, just quickly, you can, now this is a snare drum case, right, it's a nice black case, very heavy handle, it's got the strap, the whole thing. You open it up, whoop, and it's got a lovely interior, plush velour. I don't know what it's called. But it's very soft, and, and it protects the drum very well. And it's got a heavy-duty zip. And the cool thing with this case is it's also got a hidden compartment. That's not so hidden. And in here, you can put extra heads, uh, whatever you want, you know, drum keys, extra snares, bottom head, and it's protected. See, it goes like that, a snare goes in here. These are really cool, really cool cases, and I've taken them on the road, and they're really durable. So uh, so anyway, uh, check them out. I think they're 20% off today, or if you, I'm looking to throw this, but I know I'm gonna knock something over, including the camera. I'll put it back nicely. How's that? There we go, look at that. So uh, just coop it on now, uh, online there for 20% off. Check them out. And uh, they're really, really cool cases. And these drums also, Sawtooth for the newcomers. These are poplar wood.
Poplar Wood hit very hard. <laughs> Uh, Poplar Woods got a lot of lot of tone to them, a lot of sustain. I like the sustain that I'm I'm getting from these drums. This is a 12, 13, and an 18. I don't like going smaller than 12. I used to have when I, when I got a big set, I'd put a 10 here, but I find it as you can see, I'm close together here and look, can't hit, uh, really get in there. I have to boom everything. Um, and they're small for me when I'm like revved up and high energy, you know. So the tens gets a little small. Sometimes I go play somewhere and I got a 10 inch drum here. I go, you got to be kidding. You know, because certain licks, and I wanted to show you. Um, a little theory of mine, my theory for th for these, uh, uh, for playing drums, right? To have licks. Like, it's almost like having a utility belt, like Batman. You got this lick and that lick and this lick. But the way to do the licks is you got to get them, each of them really down, you know? So one lick would be, uh, I'll show you a bunch of licks real quick. And then you throw them in, you know? You don't even think about it. And you go, okay, I'm going to put in lick number one from your belt, right? So this lick, right? Really, you're taking a, a three, uh, let's call it three beat, right? Snare, tom, foot. That's that, right? Could even do this on the snare, three on the snare. Okay. And I'm just using uh, right, left, right here. And then I answer with left, right foot. See? Simple as that. So when you get these, you got to start, uh, everything's got to be steady. I always tell you that, right? So this lick. <laughs> And that's it, pumped up and played hard. Also, uh, you got to make the face. I told you this before, because if you go like this, hey, it doesn't look good. You go like this. Smack it. That looks better. So, anyway, so that's one lick. Right? That's one lick built on a three. Three beats. Now you put a left in front of it. See? So there's two lefts, right, and a foot. Slow. That's a little faster. But what you want to really do with these things, if you're playing rock, is to hit the rims, especially on the snare like this. See? Again, make the face. You don't want this. You want this. So that's this. This is four four notes. See? Left, left, right, foot. Get them like that and play it on the rim. See? My point of this was I did this yesterday on the studio kit, and the tom was a 12, but it just wasn't, wasn't a uh, sawtooth drum, so it didn't sound that good. So the lick 
it didn't sound good on the 12 because it was too thin and too high. It was like, and even here, it doesn't sound as good as here. Okay, the 12 is a higher drum. This sounds better. You could do it on the floor. So the drum tuning matters too. If this drum is tuned all the way high, it's not going to sound good. You know, these are rock fills, you know. So the drums have to be tuned, you know, so it sounds good. Now that's up to you how you want to sound. There's no trick to tuning, but you should have a spread. See? Exclamation point. Um, that's my theory. So, so that's one, uh, two licks, right? We got this, the first one. Wow. Then you got this. In a beat. All right. So those are two licks right there. Uh, I could show you a whole bunch of them, but uh, we're going to take some questions at the end, and I'm going to play a song. I'll show you one more lick. Um, what can we do here? Hmm. How about... Uh, all right. These are fours, too. Right, left, left, foot. Right, left. It's another lick, but I use that lick with a six. A six is two in front of that. So you got right, left, right, left, left foot, right, left, right. See? Right. All right, that's a six. The first one's a four. Right, left, left foot, right, left, left foot. The next one's a six. Right, left, right, left, left foot. Then there's a seven, and that's it. Seven is a four. One, two, three, four. One, E, and a, uh, and a three. So you got. See? So all these together. Almost like replacements. So four, six, seven. Now, if you keep playing the seven, you're in seven like this. Sounds like this. Play slow. That's one seven. trick is when you if you want to practice these what you want to do is get your left hand low in volume so you want the accent with the right hand and the foot like this yeah. and this is the way you mess your band up if you want to screw your band up a little bit get these down play a beat and throw these in yeah now you get get the guitar play he's going what the hell That'll show them a thing or two. Anyway, it grooves. So if you do it right, it grooves. Nobody gets lost. Very cool.
what else? And the video came out of Holy Diva with uh, uh, Melody from Liliac singing, Rudy Sauza, Michael Badio on guitar. Check it out on the app for uh, godpsmusic.com or godpslive.com. There's so many sites I get them mixed up. So anyway, check it out online, and it's really cool. And uh, don't forget the cases. The cases are really cool, and they're 20% off. And what else we got? The snare drum, I didn't mention. This is the Hickory snare drum from Sawtooth. This drum rocks, man. It's a beautiful drum. Look at that. Six inch. Woo. I don't normally use the big drums. I like the five inch. And the set, uh, the set comes with an extra floor. And it also comes with a five inch snare drum, which I like too. There we go. Um, okay, so uh, what time is it? We got Lala's going to come in and, and take your questions. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to play a song. Let me get that song up here. All right. And we're going to give you a chance. Something different here. Where the hell is it? If you guys want to win an autographed head by this guy named Vinny Apache. It's been in this room here. It's used. I don't know who this guy is, but it's pretty cool, you know, and he can probably, I can probably, I know the guy, get your name on it. So you can win this if you're in the U.S. If you're not in the U.S., you can win a an autograph photo. And the reason for that is because Lala and I have been mailing stuff to Europe, to Japan, to everywhere, even South America. And man, it takes about a month to get there. Some of it doesn't get there. So it's a real pain in the ass, as they say. And, uh, and you pay a lot of money to ship it, and it doesn't get there. So that's why this is easy to ship in the U.S. And then the photos easier to ship in Europe. So I'll ask the question after. I'm going to play one more song, and then I'll, I'll ask you guys a question. The first guy from the U.S. wins this. You even get the back of it, too. See? The back of it's pretty cool. And then the Europe or outside the U.S. will get um, autograph picture. Okay? And I can't ask the question now because then somebody will look it up on the internet <laughs> it's the problem with the internet it's like wikipedia what's the answer right where was vinnie born brooklyn Are you sure you want to stay in here? I'm going to play a whole song. You got earplugs? Okay. You don't want to wind up deaf like me. You don't? Yeah. All right. So check this out. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. And the uh, food of choice today, it's Taco Tuesday. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going for Mexican food again. Because I love Mexican food. I also love Indian food. And, uh... Italian food, of course. Okay, so here's one more song. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, AC, Jace, everybody, you guys, you know, keep practicing. These are the young, the young folks, the next generation of drummers. And because uh, when I grew up, all I had was Buddy Rich when he was on Johnny Carson's show. I had to stay up and watch him. But there was nothing like this stuff, you know, and uh, all this, the lessons online, all the stuff you can do and and chromacast and go dps has so much stuff on this site you get the app there's uh, free concerts that we did performances there's some lessons from me from rudy from everybody and uh they're really proactive in all this music uh stuff online and it's a great company and they got great drums great cases and uh you know check it out check it out check it out okay so here we go this might be loud always loud and I'll ask you a question after this song here we go 
Start it off. That wasn't the final mix of whatever that was, but it was at the end. Sometimes I do that. It's on a lot of albums. What work on here? All right. So the question is, for the first one in the U.S. and Europe, guys, guys got to populate this quick. I feel like Bob Barker from The Price is Right. And there's Carol Merrill. <laughs> I'm giving away my age. Anyway, what's the name of that song and what's the band? Well, we can check it later, too. So whoever pops that up. The name of the song I just played 
and the name of the band. <clears throat> I can give you a hint. I was in the band. So. All right. So we will. Uh, the, the band and the name of the song. Anybody? What about the song? Ooh. Come on, guys. Mm -mm -mm. You got both? Are you in the U.S.? Kevin, are you in the U.S. or where are you? Out of, out of the U.S.? You're in jail. No, he's not in jail. I'm being stupid. Just had to play low. Anybody else? Well, that's it. Kevin got both? He got, he got, he got both. What's his last name? F -O -L -L. Oh, sh oh, wait, wait, wait. Lala's mic on. Oh, I'm not on? No, what a jerk. This jerky oh, engineer here. Oh, that's why I can't hear. I can't tell. What's Kevin's last name? S H O S H O L L L L. So Kevin, send us. Are you in the U.S. or out of the U.S.? And send us an email at lastinlinemail at gmail dot com. Lastinlinemail at gmail dot com. Mail M A I L, not like a guy. Lastinlinemail at gmail dot com. So send us an email. Let us know where you are. And an address. So Kevin, send us an email with your address and we, you know, U.S. and non-U.S. Nobody else? Um, Who's that, Carmine? He no, wants to win? Carmine, Carmine wants one. Holy crap. Uh, Myla, H-I-L-E-S. Yeah. Got it right, too, but I don't know where she's from. Okay, Myra, send Myla. a... Yeah. What is it? Myla, M-I-L-A. Myla, send an email to lastinlinemail dot, at gmail.com. Where you're at, your address. There you go. And we'll send you something. That's it. The contest is off. Okay, let's take some questions. And don't forget, Thursday we got... Uh, Carmine and I hanging a banging show with Ron and Nesty. We have uh, Dirty Honey, a new band, really cool band, Dirty Honey, and uh, Mark Hudson from the uh, Hudson Brothers. So that's going to be a good show. That's Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, what do we got? Okay. Of all the bands your brother Carmine has played in, who is your favorite? Um, gee, that's a good question. Yeah, he's playing in some great bands, you know. I mean, Cactus was kick-ass. And uh, Vanilla Fudge was kick-ass. So, so was BBA. So was Blue Murder. I would say I would say Cactus. You know, they were a real rock band. You know, and a lot of stuff from Cactus. Uh, Eddie Van Halen loved Cactus, and so did the rest of the band. And there's a couple of uh, inspirational things that they heard from Cactus records that are on their records too. And he, Eddie's told Carmine that too. So, uh, Cactus is cool. The first album, uh, first album, they had a cactus up like this and two balls on the side. And that looked like, you know what, you know, something like this with two balls on it. And the record company wouldn't release it back then. So they had to add more balls. So it was a cactus sticking up and it had three or four balls. Go figure. Sensors. Um, another question. Do you have any tattoos? 
Do I have any tattoos? Nope. Nope. I'm getting a couple of uh, old age spots. I, I get rid of them. But you know what's funny? Uh, the version of uh, Black Sabbath with Ronnie and I, nobody had tattoos. Uh, the version with Bill Ward and Ozzy Osbourne, they were tattoos. So, good question. Plus, I couldn't play with the tattoo on, too. It's weird. Okay. Okay. What is your approach to playing on and off the on or off the kick he- drum head? On and off the kick drum head, what is my approach? Well, my approach is sometimes I, I keep the beater there. See, that's what the beater on there, so it's muting it a little bit. And then when I do faster stuff on the bass drum, obviously I can't mute it. I keep it main, mostly muted on the, on the head of the bass drum. And that's why I can get away with not having too much uh, pillows and blankets and, and stuff from the bedroom in here in the bass drum because I mute it. I don't let it ring. I don't. And this doesn't ring that much anyway. There's only the little Evans pillow that's in this bass drum, you know. But it's a great sounding bass drum. Okay, Question? What is your set size and the cymbal sizes? Cymbal, these are Sabian double A's. Love them. They're loud. These are loud. Look at how long they ring. That's a 20. So this is a 18 crash, medium, double A. 20, medium, double A. This is a medium, double A ride. The bell, not ob- overbearing. 14 inch hats. I like 14 inch. These are double A. These are fast. So you can get fast on them. So 14, 18, 20, and a 20 inch uh, medium ride. If I add another symbol, it might be a 17 inch just for a different sound, you know. But these are very durable uh, symbols. And the heads are G2's Evans. And the drums, of course, are, are Sawtooth. And uh, the whole combination sounds great. Okay, let's take uh, one more question. Okay. You've played different kit sizes over the years. What do you think is the optimal size and configuration? Um, well, it depends who you're playing with. Like with the last Heaven and Hell tour we did at 21 piece drum set most of it was up in the air so it was a great show and it was fun to play those things you know uh and you're playing bigger places that's probably the way to go with bigger drums more of a bigger set but if you're playing smaller places for smaller venues i like i like this with two toms this is like the standard you know last in line i played this two toms two toms and i only use two crashes you know Sometimes people look at the set and go, he's going to play that. And you see these other guys with 50 cymbals. And it looks great, but, you know, I get away with two cymbals. So I like this set, 12, 13, 18. A 16 would be before the 18 would be great. And if I add something, it would be a 10, make it look bigger. So, And this is a single foot pedal, uh, it's a chromacast pedal, very fast. I don't use double pedals or anything like that. So. And they're all in the uh, Chromacast cases that's on sale. Check it out. And the Hickory Snare Drum I see is up there, too. Uh, one more question. Where does the ball of your foot set on your pedal? It's uh, heel is up, you know. The heel is up. And uh, I'm using my ankle. Same way here, I'm using my wrist. You don't see my arm moving. Even even loud, Balala. I'm not using much arm in there, you know. But this is the the ball of the foot is on the pedal. 
and the heel is up. So, God bless you. <laughs> you sneeze. That's the first sneeze on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody's God bless her. No, you didn't. No. Didn't That's sneeze. okay. We're good here. Everything's sanitized. All right, so uh, anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining me, and I'll be back next week. Some, I'll show you some more licks next week. But the whole theory was you're playing, you got some licks, rather than just playing like these. These kind of fills. Those are cool, but then you want to... Spice it up a little bit, you know. That was the other one. Stuff like that. So uh, I'll show you some more licks next week, and uh, we'll have something else on sale next week. Check out uh, the website, the app, the whole thing up there on Chromacast and go dpsmusic.com. And, um, and the cases are great if you're new. In the uh, market for cases, check them out. They're great. Thanks again, guys. Be safe. I'll see you next week. And uh, we're going to go eat Mexican food. So we'll see you next week. It's pouring rain. It's pouring rain. <laughs>